this is the interviewer. I'm going to take the pictures. Patrick from Grinder Magazine. Good to meet you. Good to meet you. Yeah, it's okay. I know how these things are. Yeah, I know. Just got to persevere. So where do they want to do it? Well, are they doing one right now? Okay, that's cool. Okay, we're going now. Okay, we're here with Slipknot. What's up? For Grinder Magazine in Chile. Shades. Okay, and Go ahead. I'm Jen, cast assistant. I'll be questioning Slipknot. Uh, first of all, we noticed in your bio so that you went through some lineup changes in the early days. Um, how long did it take you to settle on the current lineup and who initially started the band? Sean and the bass player Paul initially started the band. I came and checked them out. When I, they initially accepted me into the band, um, I had some ideas that I brought in to the people I wanted to uh, add. Just recently, like a few months ago, we just replaced another guitar player. So it's been such an evolution on creating this monster that we've had that it's taken a long time to actually, you know, get everyone set in stone because there's nine guys. The fact is, is that, um, you know, some people, even though they're our bros, didn't want to deal with the touring. Since we've all known each other like 10 years prior to even starting the band, it was real, it's been really easy to pick who we wanted in the band and whatnot. It's been really easy. We've never had any problems. Okay. And who came up with the name and what does it mean to you? Uh, name in the band, um, I came up with the n name for the band, and basically we don't look at Slipknot as, the, you know, what a definition of one is. We look at it as, that's what our music is, that's the moniker that we have. I mean, it's a, it's, it's a short word, it's easy, it sounds cool, it's two symbol syllables, we got a logo that's pretty defined. All we want it to be is, like, whatever you take out of it, we want to have a moniker that's really easy for people to remember, so when they hear the band and they see them, and they when they see the band and they hear the music, that's easily recognizable as one thing in Slipknot. And being from Iowa, were you able to play many gigs before actually getting signed? Yeah, we played uh, we played our asses off for as long as we could. Played the Midwest, and because of funds, unfortunately, we couldn't get all the way to the East Coast or the West Coast, so we maintained strong in our home Midwest area. As many shows as we could do, and we created a really big following, you know, especially, you know, locally and, you know, the tri-state area. Okay, so what, you have... I'm sorry, go ahead. What uh, what tri-state area do you mean? Well, uh, it's like Iowa, Minneapolis, Minnesota. You know, there's Wisconsin, there's Kansas City, Nebraska. there's Nebraska. You know, around oh, that Illinois, region. Illinois, Missouri. Okay, all right. Okay, and what styles of music do you like to listen to? Uh, we listen to everything. I mean, we got nine people in the band. A lot of people ask us, I mean, where do you get your influences from and how do you make nine people stand out within the craft that you call Slipknot? It's like, well, that's the easy question is, is that we do have nine people and nine people have different influences. Um, you know, it comes back to the family thing that we never fight over apart because, you know, we've all known each other for so long and everyone has valid ideas. It's just that what makes the song the song. Okay. What, what do you, what bands do you guys like in particular? Um, we listen to everything from like, you know, Black Sabbath and Slayer to fucking Bauhaus to Terrorizer, fucking Nazm, all that shit, dude. I mean, Grindcore to fucking old traditional heavy metal Kiss, fucking cool. all that shit, you know? I mean, there's a lot of bands we don't like, you know, we won't name names, but... Okay. Uh, it, the, there, there's fewer bands we like than uh, bands that we don't, you know, bands we don't like number, or in high numbers. Okay, and um, are you familiar with black metal, and do you like that at all? Um, people like, kind of like, yeah, black metal. Um, I'll tell you what, we got a Venom Live CD sitting right over there. I mean, that's that kind of like what started it all. Yeah. We're not too in touch with all the black metal bands. I mean, it's such a sacred scene, and those people take that shit so fucking seriously. So it's like... You know, I can't really give it a valid opinion because it's like, I don't know much about it and I shouldn't fucking set my mouth where I don't know what the fuck, you know. But, I mean, I am fans of some of the bands, like, you know, we I, we have Trail of Phil CDs. And a lot of people, like, think they're, like, kind of the sellout fucking black metal band or whatever. Uh, Emperor is one of a really good, fucking good black metal band. We have discs by Absu and shit like that. But we don't know, we're not that in-depth with the black metal shit, you know. But, I mean, that's their scene, so I mean, it's like, let them take care of it. I mean, we have nothing against it. It's, you know, it's cool that those people take that shit so seriously. That's what we like about it. Okay, so what would you define your type of music? Man, that's so fucking hard, you know. We're, that's like the trick question. We actually, uh... You know, we've been asked it so much, we decided that we're going to let you guys decide what it is because we're hoping we're at the forefront of something new. You know, we're, there's nothing but respect for all the great bands that really are taking over right now in the 90s, you know. Like, you, you, I mean, you know, you know who they are, you know, and we're hoping Slipknot's at the bottom and it's going to start a new thing, you know. So we'll leave it to everybody else to decide what we are. Okay. And 
And how long does this tour last and where will it take you? Um, this uh, this tour will end up in San Bernardino, California at the end of July. Is that right, Danny? Yeah. July 25th? Yeah, uh, it's actually Devore, California. Uh, okay. Uh, July 25th. Okay. Yeah, well, they uh, added one more California it's, it's two months. It's two months long, but we're doing off dates, you know, in between days. Okay. And will you be going overseas at all with this tour? Um, yes. I mean, it will be later, but we will be overseas. Okay. And um, also, um, this is your first tour, correct? Yeah, this is our first major tour. Okay. And any particular reason why your drum kit's made out of titanium? Not, my, not mine, his. Uh, or his, the space shuttle titanium. <laughs> I'll, I'll try to make this as brief as possible. Um, when we came up with the idea with the three drummers, when I first started, you know, working on the music and stuff, it was very important to me to have uh, the percussion. I was a main drummer, you know, and um, I wanted to have the three percussions. And uh, through prior recordings, we noticed that um, it was very easy to sound too much like Joey, you know, and he's such a great drummer that, you know, we would set up wood drums and then I would sound just like him. and then we'd have to get rid of my parts, you know? And it was really frustrating and I hated that shit. So it was after years and years of working and finally, you know, I'm a welder and I make those sculptures and all that crazy shit and I make all kinds of head cages and stuff. And I finally found this guy and then I designed the fucking titanium drums and he, uh, he got them all done for me. He was the first guy who ever did like a, a titanium snare. And we made this set and they have a tone unlike any other drum ever. You know, and I'm the only yeah. guy with like all four of those drums. It's not another person, yeah. you know. And now, when you listen to like the song surfacing, you know, you'll hear this whacked out guitar come in, and then you'll hear Joey come in with a hi hat, and then Joey with bass drum, and then all of a sudden you'll feel this power. Boom! Those are the two extra percussionists, you know. Finally, you know, we differentiated the three of us, you know, and it's important because that's a big part of the live thing, you know, yeah. the the just the driving music behind it, and you know. And plus, I, you know, I've always, both percussionists always broke our wood drums like fucking unreal. We just, I'm constantly breaking wood drums and just destroying them and it gets expensive. So I finally bought something that cost a lot of money that I won't, you know, but they'll be destroyed too. So <laughs> just have to get new ones. Where do you buy titanium? Um, it's <laughs> From <kinda> NASA? <laughs> no, you gotta, it's kind of funny because where I got them, it was out of country, you know. Uh, you know, it's out of the United States, so we had a big problem with people at checkpoints and stuff, fucking wondering, wondering what the hell these, you know, some dude wants these rounded titanium, you know, oh. because <laughs> technically, technically, you know, yeah. you could put a top and a bottom to it and, and make a, a bomb. Like, confused and it could be a bomb, you know, so I went through pure hell to get those things, you know, done. And a lot of people laugh and they're just like, boo, 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 all this and that, but I think every one of us, you know, after doing the recording, it, I, I finally got the sound I was looking yeah. for, you know, and also, with recording with Joe, you know, Joey is a pretty busy drummer and it fucking just full on rules, you know, and we let him do his thing and myself and the other percussionists, we stay a little bit more simpler. You know, we don't get fancy with triplets and all this rolling stuff, dude, it's just, you know, just in your face, you know, and that's how we make it work, so that's another reason behind that titaniums, you know, I need something to get that driving force straight out, you know. Yeah, it does. And I also read that um, you started in 95. Are the songs on the new album all new or some from early days? Two songs from the old album, but I mean the band has coalesced so much since then. We have a di we had a different singer when that first album was out. I mean I consider this album to be our first album. That thing was like a little bit of a, like a marketing blueprint, kind of like putting ideas down. We just we threw it out, you know, because we needed to, we needed to let people know that we existed. But I mean there's two songs that exist from there, and uh, those what? songs are tattered and torn and gently. No, excuse me, Tired and Torn and Only One. Tired and Torn and Only One. Okay, what was that recording called? <clears throat> uh, Mate, Feed, Kill, Repeat. Okay, right, all right. And uh, what, was that like a demo or? Demo CD. Okay. Soul Searching. That's what, basically what we're doing. Yeah, there. right, looking. Just looking for the sound. I know it will not be in print anytime soon. <laughs> Look on the internet. <laughs> anybody, anybody fucking ripping us off and doing that stuff, it's not good. It's not cool at all. 
we'll keep an eye on. Okay, and also we noticed that there's references to Clockwork Orange and ultra violence and things that we've read about you. Are you guys movie buffs or what we're are movie buffs? But favorites? those people that are making those references are those people's own opinions that they've drawn from the band themselves. We haven't made those type of uh, opinions on those. That's what we're trying to do. I mean, it's never been like that at all. I mean, they just made that shit up and it's kind of got out there. We have nothing to do with it. Okay. So you guys never said those no, words, those never, terms? No, I mean, those words never came out of our mouths. Oh, okay. okay, so those are just like review. Review, review opinions and fucking shit. What was the second one? Um, what type of movies are your favorites? Oh. Do you enjoy watching movies? Yeah, we like, you know, like The Shining, The Exorcist. Classics. You know, yeah, we're more taxi into, driver. We're more, we're more into this, you know? Yeah. We're more into fucking some fucking real ass mental stuff, you know? I mean, we watch it all, but if it's up here, we like it. We like stuff with substance, you know, not a bunch of special effects necessarily. Well, things that make you think. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And are there any songs already written for your second album? Yeah. Yes, there are. Like three or four of them. And they're fucking bad. And there's an, and yeah, it's like, fuck, I'm like, oh, shit. We got, we got songs that we kept, uh, we're, we're the type of band that's already thinking about the sophomore album. You know, this isn't something we want to fail. And we actually did pull some really great songs aside, and we're gonna rework them for the future, you know, because that that that's important, you know. It's always got to be thinking about everything, you know. So why blow the whole load at one? We we got what we really wanted to do for the first album. We got plenty of good stuff already. Do you have any titles in mind or any titles uh, for future? Car. Uh, that's actually we. That's one of the songs, but that's not going to be the title of the song, you know? And plus there's uh, also a song called Snap. Yeah, Snap might make it. But I mean, all we have is songs. We don't have, like, titles in them. That's, that, those are the songs that we call them, so you can't really quote me on that. That you call them for now, but when yeah. they come out, they so will be titled something So we know what song we're talking about. Yeah, right. totally, that car song will totally be a different, it'll be reworked completely, you know? Cool. Okay, and um, also another question: Has anyone compared you to Mushroomhead from Ohio as for similar? Heard the name, the but costume? just heard the name. Okay, that's it. Okay, no. so we, we don't we even we never see we don't know what they're never even heard of them. Really. Someone made like a comment like that they maybe or something like this, and then like we saw something on the internet like after we heard that, it's like that's what they're comparing us to. What the fuck? <laughs> the music's quite different, but it's yeah, probably worlds similarities apart. with the Worlds masks. apart, that's I don't see any. I mean, it's like, okay, it's like, if you compare us to Mushroom Head, then fucking start comparing Absu and Emperor. I mean, if, like, people wear, like, all the black metal bands fucking wear the fucking same makeup and got bullet belts and blood all over them. <laughs> but, I mean, if fucking you're into the music, you're gonna fucking be able to differentiate what band is what. Where did you come up with the idea for the outfits that you're wearing right now? Um, it's the SKU numbers. <laughs> yeah, um... Man, that's, that's a hard thing. Yeah. We don't really, uh, to be honest with you, I'm sorry to jump right. in. Uh, the numbers, and I, I will tell you that everybody fell into a number. They're not just systematically given out. Everybody got the number they wanted. As far as the, the barcodes, that's just something you have to figure out for yourself. It, it really means something to us. I don't want to go too much into it. And uh, as far as the boiler suits, man, you know, it's like... We're a fucking army, you know? We're our own thing. We're not about our faces. We're not about our weight, our muscles, our fucking girlish figures. I don't give a shit. We're Slipknot. We come out to the stage and we give you everything we got. I mean, when we're done and we take this shit off, first of all, we, we don't even like going through life without this stuff on. But when, we're, when we do get off, I mean, you guys are the fans. You guys are the ones buying the album. You're the one keeping us on tour. You know, I feel like we've given you everything when we go out there. We're hot as fuck. We're dying. We're losing oxygen. I feel like I'm thanking you personally yes. by doing this. You know what I'm saying? And Literally trolling ourselves. I don't give a fuck what I look like, and I hope you guys don't either. It's all yeah. about the music. Yeah. Period. I mean, a lot of people are, like, fucking treat, like their music is like a fucking fashion show in their faces and shit and they're all about posing even though it's not I guess what fans call poser music like the glam stuff no but there's fucking a lot of posing going on in heavy metal music you know about what trying to look like something like or like whatever you know and I know that kind of sounds like a little weird because of what we got going on but the thing is there's a million bands a million people out there and that includes the bands that are on OzFest or bands in the world or bands that haven't made it yet that would love to show their fucking faces on that stage and we don't even fucking do it right you know I mean, it's... <laughs> no one knows who the fuck we are. Everyone would love to be out there fucking gloating and having all the attention. We don't give a fuck. I mean, it's not... It, 
we can't we can't state it enough. I mean, this right. is a whole different deal for us. Right. These are your faces. I mean, yeah. this, this yeah. is it. You know, yeah. man. Like, you I know what you mean. Like, no, I know don't. what you mean. I know what you mean. Yeah. And, you know, it's uh, that's great. Like uh, we were talking earlier to someone who was interviewing us, our DJ. He uh, he's got nine, I think nine, ten different gas masks, and he literally believes that every one of them is a different one of his personality, which scares us because, you know, who the fuck is he then? You know what I'm saying? And when he's on stage, if he's not feeling one thing, he will change one, and you will see a whole new person. You know, yeah. he doesn't depend on those masks to live, but it's. It's right in here, you know, all the way, and it's important, and everybody needs it, you know, and right. and it, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, you know, it's it's what is for us, you know. I don't know about other people; I don't really care, but it's our deal. Cool. Okay, and also in a nine-man band, it must be difficult to get along and agree on all the ideas. Is that true? It never is. Believe it or fucking not, it's never a problem. That's hard to believe. <laughs> people ask me all the time, and I can't stress it enough that it's actually not a problem. We know, never has it. we know, the band knows where we want to be, the band knows what we want to do, we all know what's cheese, and, and there's, some, there's some leading people that start the actual movement of the music. You know, the root, there's a root part of the band, the main drummer, two fucking guitar players, a bass player, okay, they get it going, you know, myself, the other percussionist, the DJ, the sampler, you know, we're set, we're layers, you know, we come in later. I get inspired by watching him. I don't want to step on his dick, you know. Right. I watch where I can come. The singer, we don't just get up, but, but, but you know, he, he writes for now. Right. And, and, you know what I'm saying? So he, he uh -huh. gets the group. And what's so great is once, once the movement starts going, it gets really exciting and it starts getting really brutal. And if, if it's magic, that means the song has stayed. And that means like everybody has thrown in their little part and then we all feel, we just get giddy about it, you know? Right. Because if we don't get giddy about it, it so never, wrong. It, yeah. it fucking, it's out the door. We've played, we've played songs for two months in our practice place, played them live once and they're already shit canned, never it's the like, world. If it don't work live, then it's like, yeah. Out the door, and I'm talking about really good songs. Yeah, you know? it's like we think they're bad down in the basement, and if, they, if we play them live, we'll, we know within fucking ten seconds if it's working or not. Right. We spent all our days in the cheesy bands, man. Right. You know, we're here in right. it to win it. You know what I'm saying? We know what we know where we want to be, and it's up here. And if it's not happening up here, it's gone. It's done. It's not worth pursuing. So that kind of goes into the next question then. Do some of the members contribute more to writing than others or is it... I'd optimal? say it's pretty equal. I mean, there's people that come up with ideas and stuff, but I mean, if it wasn't for everyone there to play the fucking part and execute it right, then I mean, fuck, you know? I mean... The everyone's just as important as everyone, you know? It just has to be like that. Can't get in the way of egos right now. But like you said, there's the root, and then the other members expand yeah. on I mean, the, the root that is set down. We have like, out of a 90s band, we got like six people that can play guitar and write riffs. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. Okay. Everybody's so saying, not just the guitarists yeah, know how to play guitar. Guitar. Well, guitar was my first instrument. Oh, shit. Okay. And he gets up all the time. I, I'm not going to name any songs in particular unless he wants to, but we have, we have plenty of songs where he's gotten up and written the main riff. You know, and then you got the, riff, the guitar players of the band you know, they're, they're schooled, studied fucking guitar players. They're putting the real shit into it. They come straight from his house, you know. He'll be laying in bed, all of a sudden wake up, one hand on his dick and fucking answering machine, did 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 playing a riff, you know what I'm saying? It's always slipping out all the time. Cool. And you think about that, you know, even the sampler, you know, this is where you were saying it, everybody contributes. Yeah, he might just push buttons or something, you know, but an 808 really can inspire everybody on the stage. Right. You know, if there's that crucial moment where it can just be, boom, you know, boom, it's already, wow, now we're going into this. So, you know, everything is important, even if it's a fucking pfft. Right, right. Okay, and so what are your future plans, or are you planning having any promo videos coming out? We got a video coming out. We just shot a video for Spit It Out. And it's gonna be fucking bad. Okay, you know, where will like that it. be aired at? Probably about a month and a half. I don't know where they're gonna air it, man. That's the labels and gig now. Much music and all that, yeah. European much music MTV. Loud and then the fucking box and then all those public access channels to run videos and then overseas MTV. Right. You know, because everything but MTV, MTV here. in here, right? Everything yeah, but I mean, that. you know, we're gonna we're gonna use every vehicle known to man don't happen we don't give a fuck you know yeah. you as a fan you'll find it you'll like it it's for you you know cool. we'd like the mass amount of people to get it but you know the political game you know yeah. we're right. not here to suck no I dick went, went through it today yep. <laughs>
That's why you're on the bus with us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Any final words? Come out and see us on OzFest and we're going to throw this shit down. Hope you like it. Album comes out June 29th. Awesome. Beautiful. Check out our web pages www.slipknot1.com and www.slipknot2.com. Okay. Thanks. Okay, and also let me do. Okay, I want to do one thing. I'm going to set the fader on this and I want you guys to. I'll go like that and then I want you to say. Um, this is so and so and so and so from Slipknot, and you're watching Grinder Magazine home video. Okay. No, <laughs> wait, Grinder. Grinder Magazine. You're watching Grinder home video. Okay. Yeah, because this guy will take like parts.